Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to dig deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. Finance ministers from the G20 recently gave their seal of approval to a global tax reform plan that could really shake up the international business world. The deal agreed to at a meeting in Washington earlier this month is highly likely to be given the green light when the G20's heads of state gather in the coming weeks. This was first raised at the OECD level in the summer. Now, the crux of the plan is a minimum 15% tax rate on multinational enterprises taking effect from 2023. The minister said the new system will establish a more stable and fair international tax system by allowing the home country of the parent company to collect the difference between the rate paid by the subsidiary of the low tax jurisdiction and the 15 percent rate. Now, for more on this, uh, we have our Professor Oh Jun Sok from Sung Myung Women's University School of Business. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Now, firstly, uh, how will this deal affect South Korea's ability to attract new investment from international firms? And what about the foreign firms that already have a base here? Uh, as scheduled, 136 countries and jurisdictions out of 140 involved have completed a years-long OECD BEPS project uh, to reform international taxation standard that will help countries collect an extra $100 billion in corporate income taxes annually from global companies. As for the effects of the deal, in short, it will slow down the decision process of investment for global companies, cut down global value chain, and reconfigure a global business network with the introduction of OECD Pillar 1 and 2. Just before commenting the effects for Korea to induce foreign investment and then existing uh, multinational firms, let's not forget two principles of international taxation, regions country principle and source country or market country principle. It depends on what tax authority of the global companies uh, have the major and dominant power to levy tax between resident country and market country or source country. Until now, resident country of global companies has the lion's share of taxation. Uh, but OECD global tax reform uh, at this month can be named for the grand power shift from resident country taxation to market country taxation. Uh, what is foreign investment? Uh, it refers to transferring capital movement uh, from resident country to market country. Other things being equal, capital movement into market country will be exposed much, much more than it would be referred to tax risks or legal risks. In this respect, inbound capital inducement would become in a difficult situation uh, while a tough uh, season uh, will be a waste. On the other hand, by way of M&A or uh, of selling equities as a way of global risk management, readjustment of global value chain outbound investment might be triggered. Korea uh, can never be an exception, lest Korea keep renovating uh, doing business environments. Uh, it is uh, uh, kind of a tough time. Okay, and uh, just briefly, which of South Korea's sectors are most likely to be affected by this? And do you foresee some of the sectors banding together uh, to attempt to form or at least ask for an exemption if that's even possible? Uh, for the time being, uh, I suppose the effects on Korean multinationals hopefully uh, might be limited or slightly uh, affected because the tax deal applies for companies with global revenue of over 20 billion euros, equivalent to 23 billion US dollars, and profitability of over 10% of revenue. As the finance ministry said in a tone of political consideration, the new global tax regime is expected to have a limited impact on the competitiveness of Korean farm. As Korea's corporate income tax rate is 25% already, uh, paying more than the minimum 15% being mandated by the global tax reform, and that international tax treaties could prevent Korean companies from double taxation. Uh, Samsung Electronics with uh, uh, roughly $209 billion of revenue and SK Hynix uh, with $28 billion of revenue are both above the threshold and could find themselves having to pay higher taxes and pay more of their taxes uh, to other market countries. Uh, but 
under the program, uh, some Korean companies uh, could be more heavily taxed uh, as they are large enough to trigger uh, the implementation of the rule when the level will be lowered to 10 billion euros after seven years, uh, meaning that uh, more Korean companies like Neighbor and Kakao, uh, they might change their uh, global strategy, could be targeted and exposed to tax risks with higher compliance risks. And Professor, in spirit, this deal is all but done at the ministerial and leadership levels, but what challenges remain actually enforcing this? One would hope the respective legislators of the G20 countries would also have to give the steel for their blessing for it to take effect. Uh, in total, 136 countries have agreed in principle uh, to the OECD-led agreement that will seek to tax multinational companies at a rate of 15% uh, as you committed, regardless of where they are headquartered and regardless of where they are operate. The tax deal will be sent to a group of 20 meeting uh, finance ministers scheduled for endorsement, and G20 leaders are expected to approve the deal uh, at the summit in Rome at the end of October. Uh, what's left is the application of OECD Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 into domestic tax laws uh, in member countries. A series of uh, revising domestic tax law processes will start it might be different, uh, difficult, and complex depending on the legal system and uh, administrative procedures country by country. Uh, uh, already you mentioned that uh, 2023 deadline uh, has been set for implementation. Referring to the effects of introducing OECD Pillar 1 and Pillar 2, it will work to collect more tax revenue in source countries or market countries, uh, but the plan is designed initially to allocate and apportion some income taxes to countries where goods or services are sold uh, to make sure that more revenue is attributed uh, to uh, places where the end user reside. Uh, but uh, it is uh, proved and evidenced by document. Uh, it will generate other types of compliance costs and bonding costs for uh, taxpayers. Uh, so uh, it, uh, it, it may depend on the, the country by country. Okay, wonderful, uh, complex issue, but you explained it uh, very comprehensively. We appreciate that. Uh, thank you for coming on today. That was Professor Oh Jun Sok from Sukmyong Women's University School of Business. Thank you. Thank you.